Hi, good morning, Apir. It's good to see you. Uh, great to see you. Judy back. Where's, oh, Judy's already gone, right? So Lighthouse already working. Yeah. It's been a quite interesting week, and I feel like it's been a month, but uh, it's been only the week. But can I ask you just a, a, a favor? Can you just turn back and say hello to Daniel? He's watching right now. Daniel, hello. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> that was, that's quite, I don't know. We can't see that. I mean, so right. good, to, good to have him back. So, okay. So let me just... Um, Continue on the the, um, the, uh, the our sermon series uh, today. Actually, meant to be uh, Pastor James preaching on something else, uh, but we sort of decide to switch uh, that our topics that they already uh, put in the place. And I think just because the time where we are right now, especially uh, Daniel and the Lisa G going through this, and I think it's, we felt as a pastors that this is actually the right topic, so we decide to switch. Uh, we start talking about this non-negotiable, you know, um, and uh, Pastor James preached a really powerful sermon on power, right? And uh, power in the world of rebellion and sexuality in the world of immorality, money in the world of greed. And we want to talk about community in the world of selfishness. You know, idea of a community and why is it non-negotiable for us? Why is it so important? And as we're doing the church of house churches and how to try to build a happy church this way. Yeah. Well, I just want to share with you community is not our idea. Community also is not even option as a Christian. Very God that we worship. He is a communal God. He's a relational God called Trinity, Trian God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, yeah? So idea of family and relationship come from Him and you can't do church. You can't do Christian work without community, yeah? And, and that's the beauty of this. Uh, the, the, who, the God already gave us um the himself, and so that we can become more like him. You know, whether even if you're Christian or not, but we all crave for the community, don't we? Yeah, I mean, why you want to get married? Why you want to get uh, they to go out with someone, find a partner? I mean, there's a, a innate, like uh, the natural desire to be with someone. That's why I guess the Facebook, Instagram, and uh, I don't know, WhatsApp, or whatever, whatever you use, the, the social media is so popular these days because it creates a certain sense of community, right? You write something, people write back, or people that like you and put, you, they put up the picture and it's like, you feel like uh, you're connected with someone, right? Because we love it. And somehow it became a bit too much these days. And um, some people got obsessed about it, like your mood changes it depends on how much likes you get on the Facebook. Yeah, how many of you guys like that? Okay, don't put your hands up, right? You need a prayer. <laughs> um, but to be, to be honest, like, uh, let's see the reality of that. Is that real community? It's not real community, isn't it? You know, they like it, that thing that you wrote. It's not necessarily because they really like it. They did it because it didn't cost them anything. And they like it. Not necessarily they're like you, but they're like what you've done or what you have. It constantly becoming superficial. We're constantly building the re relationship, community. The idea is that we want it, but we don't know how to have it. We don't know what it takes to have that. We only stay where this superficial level where we don't really go deeper into the level where your life will be connected with someone and your life will build around other people. So today I want to talk about community in the world of selfishness. All right. And the Bible talks about the community in a two ways. Number one, descriptive way. Number two, prescriptive way. Descriptive way, basically, if you, you are in the community, if you, you are part of this community, this is what, how it looks like, yeah? It's not a command. It's just describing it, what it looks like. And then also, Bible talks about, do you want this? Then you got to do this. And that prescription comes in, Right? So I want to talk about these two things. How about I just pray? Father God, I just want to uh, come before you and um, 
And I bring this whole topics of the community as non-negotiable in the world of this individualism and selfishness. Lord God, I pray you build a strong, powerful, intimate community in this place, Lord God. Would you speak to into the people who are lonely right now, who feel so alone in this, in their walk, in their journey. Today, Lord God, would you enlighten them and let them know that they are not alone in this, in this time. Tell them to come to you, come back to the community and church, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Description. I think the best passage that I can think of is the first Corinthians chapter 12. All right, I got the flicker. Don't worry. I got the flicker. All right. First chapter, uh, Corinthians chapter 12, 14 to 20. Let me just read this to you guys. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the body should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should, should, should say, because I am not an ear, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole, uh, the body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would be the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. All right. Okay. The thrust of this passage is basically that you have many bodies. You have many parts in one body, right? You are all serving different things. You are meant to be different. And the, the way it looks when you come to build a community, the reason is strong, the reason is beautiful, the reason is actually effective and works is because the fact that you are different, yeah? Acknowledging the difference is not really mean that you are divided. And uh, so some, some says, you know, when before you get married, opposite attracts, right? My wife and I complete opposite person. Like I'm, ah, you know, my wife is a very calm and, and a more human being. I'm more like, a, you know, running around like a But, you know, they say opposite attracts. You know, after they get married, get married, what opposite attacks, right? <laughs> when you, because I found so many different things about my wife is becoming uncomfortable. Why do we always struggle difference in the community? Because it's uncomfortable. But when you overcome that, the way God pictures church, your differences is beautiful. Your diversity is beautiful. Acknowledge that. I mean, imagine that your body looks like this, right? It's all, I know it's a disgusting look, right? It's all eyes, several arms, some several legs, you know? Because, hey, we are, I, I, I'm an eye, so let's all get together. Let's hang out together as eyes. You know, only just, let's just do the things because you like, you are like me, I'm like you, right? And what kind of church we become, what kind of community we have? We become like that monster, right? And I mean, one of the typical example that we can think of is that some people very analytical and that they loving, uh, uh being, um, a, a bit more, uh, structured and all this. Oh, I want to build a church just with the only people who are analytical, only structural. Oh, some people are a bit more emotional. Some people are a bit more uh, intuitive. I would say, you know, then, oh, let's just build a church very emotional and very like a feeling kind of church. If you have a church like that all the time, if you desire like that. I am only going to hang out with the people that like me. And that's not how God intends you to be. You know what happened then? There's no growing. There's no building. There's no challenge. There's no help. There's no support. Yeah? Okay, that's one description. You are different. How about second description? The passage continues, though, though I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. No, again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seems to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and our 
unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, uh, with our more presentable part do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Okay, this part describes something that you are different. We meant to be different. We come here with the differences. So you cannot say that because of the difference, hey, you don't belong to me. You don't belong to us. Yeah? But if the flip side is that, you know what? I'm so different. And I'm so uncomfortable surrounded by people that I don't know. I want to do just on my own. I just want to go my journey on my own. If that's the attitude, right? That's not how God built you. Does it make sense? You are not meant to be alone. No? I mean, another, I want to show you this, another disgusting picture here, right? Are you ready? All right. Have you seen this, uh, this uh, the TV series called Adam's Family? Do -do 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 -do. You know that one? Uh, obviously, I'm showing my age right there. Um, there was a thing, this thing called thing, that's hand walking around. And when I saw it first, man, that was like, right? And actually, I had an even more disgusting picture, but I decided not to show it to you. Why is it, why is it disturbing? Why is it disgusting? It's just his hand. You know, my hand is beautiful, right? My hand, beautiful, right? <laughs> Why is it disgusting? Think about it. The only reason it's disgusting, nothing wrong being a hand, only reason it's disturbing is because it's detached from the body. Think about that. Hand itself is normal, it's beautiful, it's useful, it's helpful. It's meant to what it looks like. There's nothing wrong with this hand. But as soon as it gets detached from the body, it becomes a abnormal, it becomes weird, it becomes monstrous, right? What I'm saying is that what the Bible describes is that you come together, belong and join in together. That's when you are more beautiful. And when you are together, the word is together, everybody said together. We're going to say a lot today, together actually make you stronger. Together, you are more effective. Your marriage will be better when you are together. Right? Your work will be better when we are together, coming together. I mean, in this season, when I just look at like Daniel and Lisa, you know, in my entire ministry, I've been through so much, but this is something that actually gives us complete new perspective of what church should look like. And I'm extremely proud of you guys, right? Because there is a certain togetherness here, right? And you belong. And I, I, I just pray for those people who haven't found the church, who haven't really joined in. And there are some people telling me, no, I don't need church. I just need God. Actually, that's wrong. That's not how God wants us to be. The description of your life is belonging somewhere together. That's how you are beautiful. That's how you be more powerful. Amen. But next passage actually talks about the one of the, I think, point of the description of the community is this. Next verse goes, if one member surface, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. So, conclusion of all that, we are all different, but when we get together, we are connected, and this is the result. Result is that one member suffers, everybody suffers. One member honored, everyone with choice. What is it? Connection. Everybody says connection. We are connected. Right? Have you ever got the cut on your finger? Right? I think I learned, when you get a cut, the two things I learned. This small cut, my whole body feels, right? It's a small cut and the suddenly your priority is a sense. I don't care what's going on, the rest of my body is like, I got a cut, right? Yeah, I had to pay attention to this right there, right? Number two, when you get a cut, I know, ah, oh, this finger belongs to my body, right? If Jessica got a cut, I don't care, right? 
<laughs> it's not my body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey? When there is suffering, that's when you know the body feels, oh, this part belongs to the body. I, I was actually one, the, one of the first one who got a call from Lisa and I was in the plane and uh, uh, on Sunday, last week Sunday, so, and um, the door was closed and I was about to put the flight mode because, you know, they told tell you too and the, 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 the phone rang and I just saw it and the, like Daniel G and, and I picked up and then, and as Lisa was just like a help, help me, uh, Pastor Josh. And then I was, I was, uh, she was, uh, uh, yelling. I was yelling too. And the students came and it's like, you, know, uh, you have to turn the phone off. I said, medical emergency. I said, shut up, medical emergency. I was just like, I just, I was uh, shouting and all this stuff. You know, this funny sensation came into my body. You know, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you in front of the Lisa and Daniel here. It's like suddenly things got so clear. In my mind. Suddenly something is just like, things like that happen. I hung up the phone and that one hour flight, I just couldn't think of anything else. Yeah. And well, just right before I called James, I called my wife, I talked to Daniel and they actually work so hard. It's beautiful. But you know what? We know that that moment, I don't, I didn't think about church building that I've been worrying about. You know, I didn't think about the whole toilet that we had, that disgusting toilet you guys have to go to. I didn't worry about that that moment. That moment, I didn't worry about church finances. I didn't worry about anything else. I thought about the only thing in my mind was uh, this man that I love and how important he is in my life, in our church, and Lisa, the family. Priority sets in. Right, and throughout the week, we all going through together, right? And watching their journey, their struggle, their rest, they're fighter, man. They're fighting. When I watch them, they stay there. We feel the pain together. We feel this uh, anguish. We feel the tears. We feel the joys. Any positive sign they have, we just feeling every ways together. And in my heart, in my heart, I'm telling you, wow, we are a body. We belong together. My goodness, this is what community should look like. It's, before I go into the next passage, I just want to thank you guys. I really want to thank you and on behalf of Elisa, for all those people, literally everybody. Now I got the Houston in America to pray for them and Hong Kong, Singapore, Ling from home, like Singapore, <laughs> like out of like, can you pray for Daniel? And they all prayed, but also for those people, you guys stepped up for last week, looking after the children and bring the food for the children and the, bring the food for the people who helping. Like a Jenny brought the food for us because they know, she knows that my wife is so busy helping. So we, you know, there's no one cook me, so she, she can't trust me, obviously. So she brought the food for us. That helped me help the family. Church, I, I believe this is what God was talking about in the Bible. It's not really about the size that makes your church better or stronger. It's not really about the, the, uh, the programs that we have or I don't know, you know. It's really about, it's not really about traditional theology. It's not really all those things. And then when you read the Bible, community is really about the connection and togetherness. Are we together in this? Are we, how do we know what someone in your, part, uh, in your body suffer? And how do we go through the journey together? Hmm. That's a description. Next one is, prescription then, a prescription. Then how do we get that? How, what is the intentional things that we have to do to make it happen? The community is built. Community doesn't just happen. That's, a, that's not my saying, right? It's a biblical understanding. Community is built. It doesn't just happen. And Bible says this is the way to go. All right, that's a key passage that I have is this. Hebrew chapter 10, 23, 25. Can you read together? One, two, go. Let us hold fast confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. 
and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing here. Amen. Is that have a laser pointer? Yes, one person go like that, one person go like that. What is that? <laughs> what do I press? Red? Hey, here you go. All right. Let's understand this passage. I think this is one of the powerful passages that talks about how we can actually build that community. Yeah? Number one, let us hold fast confession, which means you got to have right theology. I mean, don't take the theology as a you know, academical, uh, the, um, or is it this, uh, you know, like too religious word? The theology, when I say theology, is that the, your core belief, yeah? Core belief, who God is and what our relationship with Him and what was His promise was, right? And that is what first thing you have to do to build a community is that let's hold fast confession of our hope without wavering. Yeah, why? Because he who promised is faithful. Because it's all about God. It's about God who initiated. It's a God who orchestrated. It's God who accomplished it. So you know him. You hold on fast onto who he is. That's why we're doing all these teachings. We're doing this uh, Bible, like a sermon on Sunday. It's not just about us. You cannot build the community just about us. Well, let's just uh, love on each other. Let's just accept one another, which is good, but you need Jesus in there. Amen? Why? Because the Bible says only perfect love casts out all fear. Who's got the perfect love? You don't have it. I don't have it. And we're all this journey with uh, Daniel and Lisa, we all experience our own weakness. So, and also, what happened in Jesus makes us come together. Church, this church is never about Pastor Joshua Choi. I know you know, but I'm just reiterating right there, just in case, you know. This church is never about this guy. This guy, no. You know, <laughs> I say this a, like a funny way, right? But it's true. I, I deal with my own insecurity, my Korean accent. I don't know why you're still coming to church, you know, listening to this. But I realized the reason we are all here together, the reason that we actually to connect each other. I would do the same thing, thing too that I did to Daniel Lisa. If any of you happen, why? Because of Jesus. Jesus gave me the heart. Jesus gave you the love. Jesus gave you purpose. We need to hold fast, hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering because you will be tempted to be waver. You will be tempted to make it all about us all the time. But we have to make it about God. Can you say amen? amen. Number two. And let us consider. So first thing is to hold theology. Number two is let us consider how to stir up. Okay, what is consider? You got to think about it, right? It means you have to strategize it. Number one, hold your theology. Secondly, consider strategy. What's our strategy to build this, right? Consider, number one, to stir up one another. You got to learn how to stir. Stir up one another. Okay, what comes into your mind when you say stir up? Stir up is just like being passive and just sitting there. Hey, if you want to do it, do it, whatever. Is that, is that stirring up, right? What does stirring up look like to you? I, to me, stirring up is actually running on. Jesse, what are you doing, man? What are you sitting there? What are you writing, right? This is really all about it. Come on, right? The, there's an intentionality in there. There's a passion in there. There's actually, I'm not going to let you die there, right? I'm going to go and actually be, bother you. I'm going to inconvenience myself. That whole idea of, I'm going to be part of you, right? That's stirring up. Number one strategy you have to understand. If you wait for it to be feel like, you never feel like it. You got to stir up. You got to learn to stir up. Then, how to stir up? I mean, I mean, 
how, how do we do this? So this is actually important. That's why we have our meetings like pastors meet on Wednesday and executive committee meetings and the shepherds meet together, your team meeting. Why? Because we want to come and strategize. And you know, okay, now, what are we strategizing? You know, I think these are two important words here. Love, everybody says love and good work. Church, we are here to love. Amen? Come on. We are here to love. That's why the moment you make church on just organization or institution to run things, actually the church can be run by that kind of skill set without loving, right? I've been to that kind of church too. I, you know, I was part of that kind of organization before. It can be big and all that stuff. But bottom line is that we need to learn how to love. Okay, this is a whole lot of topic of sermon. What is love, right? But one thing that I, we all experienced this week was love. Bottom line is that someone hungry, go and feed him. Someone is a sick bed, we go and actually encourage him. Someone truly do journey together, right? I'm here together with you, right? And doing good work. Yeah, that's why Bible says church is an organized organism that we're living body, not just organization. The moment you become an organization, you forget this. Love and good works. Number two strategy is this, not neglecting to meet together, not neglecting people. Why? Because as in the habit of some, there are some people, it's 2,000 years old, it's always same habits exist till now. Some people <laughs> neglecting to meet, yeah? Why is it? There's two reasons. Number one, physical reason. We always, we always uh, give for the comfort. That's, how, that's who you are somehow right now, our simple body. Number two, spiritual reason. Enemy hates you meet together. Enemy actually afraid when you become, when you're alone, you are weaker. You are easier to pray, but when you get together, you are stronger. So enemy will do whatever it takes to make you not to come on Sunday. How many of you guys struggle to come here on Sunday today? I know some of you actually struggle. For what? Just sip, you know, sip. Oh, I can't be bothered. How many of you guys are going through that? What is that? It's a spiritual attack. You got to understand this. And it's a 2,000 years old spiritual attack. It works sometimes. And... Habit of some is a habitual thing, right? But if you want to build church, my friend, you got to learn how to meet together. Everybody says together. Yeah. All right. Just question, question. How many of you guys used to be very passionate and strong Christian? Yeah, you used to be. But you slowly, slowly drift away. Not necessary. one day, one day, just one morning you wake up. I'm not going to believe in Jesus anymore. It's not like that. It's just one Sunday you miss. Second Sunday you miss. Third Sunday you miss. You just slowly, slowly drift away. And you found yourself. I don't know even I believe in Jesus. How many of you guys found yourself in the place? I've seen thousands of people like that. You know, devil is very cunning. They are not that stupid. They know how to get you. They know how to get you in a very, very subtle way. I've been talking to one of the members in the church last week. They said they, they are really on fire right now. They are really loving how church, they're leading and all that stuff. But they're saying there were time, there were time. And like uh, coming to church is a kind of a chore. Every Sunday morning is like whenever they feel like it, oh, I'll do it. Whenever they don't feel like it, yeah, maybe not. So it became a, almost like a casual thing for them. And they found themselves. They lose the joy in Christ. They don't have a support system anymore. They found that there's no belonging, right? And now they're much more joyful what? When they committed. Commit. Oh. Commit to, to meet together. Okay. And the last leap. Everybody said encourage. Encouraging one another. So do not neglect like me to so meet together and encourage. Encourage one another. Okay. I really want to just spend some time on this and finish it off. Do you want to build a community that really God desires in this church, which we are already becoming actually 
beautiful. But do you know how we can strengthen each other? How we can really build? One word. One word, really. Actually, two words. <laughs> because I got adjective. Intentional encouragement. Intentional encouragement. Let me explain this to you. Encouragement is not the, the, the result of your emotion. Yeah? Encouragement is a result of commitment. I encourage my children not whenever I feel like to do it. I encourage my children because they need it from my from father. So Bible says that this is all of the Bible. Encourage each other, encourage each other, encourage each other. Why? Because we are so easily get discouraged. We are so easily discourage each other, right? We need to know, encourage, like, please encourage your son, man, right? Encourage each other. And how, okay, let me just give you a very, very kind of simple example. I feel encouraged when I come here and when I look at you watching, looking at me, yeah? When I preach sermon. I, I get discouraged when you don't look at me, of course, right? When Pastor James come in and leads a little prayer, let's pray. When everybody prays, Everybody like, you know, they like put their hearts in it. We get encouraged, to be honest, right? Right? And uh, when I came to Australia, I'm from the, I'm from a very conservative Korean church in Korea. You know, we don't speak anything you know, in that church. Everybody's so silent for two hours. It was such a boring sermon. I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, very serious. It's so serious environment. So, you know, that's how I grew up. I came to Australia and I went to Bible college. It's the first Bible college I went. So lively, right? And one thing that I found, that it took me a while to adjust, was that whenever you pray like, oh, Jesus, I love you. And then they just randomly pops out, yeah, yeah. They you know that, that kind of, a, what do you call this? You know, they just say it, right? And whenever someone preaches, they preach together almost, right? Preach brother, they come out like that, right? You know, amen, all this stuff. It's like, oh, that's weird. You know, why, why, are, you, why are you disturbing this, right? Well, as I become a pastor, wow. Actually, I realize why they do that. They are encouraging each other. You know, like, for example, when I pray, you know, when, when you had to lead a prayer, there was always someone saying, hmm, Yes, Lord. Mm, right? That's me. That's me, right? <laughs> Why? I mean, personally, because I like it. You know, when I pray something, everybody's silent. It's like, I don't know if they're really listening to my sermon. Oh, my, my sermon. <laughs> my, my prayer. And are we in this together? Right? In a, just any normal relationship, my wife and I, there are times that we wrestle, struggle because we assume too much. We really assume that you should know this by now, right? You should read my thought, right? No? But sometimes we make it intentional encouragement. Do you know what happened? When you are silent, enemy speaks. Listen, when you're silent, enemy speaks the words in your mind and give you that certain assumption, make you think, maybe this person don't like me. Maybe this person doing this thing because you analyze it, you over, uh, over analyze, you think through it and all this. There's a lot of uh, enemy activity in there. But when you say it, we say, I love you, right? I love you. Or when you say, yes, go for it, my brother, right? There's an intentional encouragement comes. What happened? You are encouraged. And when it, what happened then? You are strengthened. Then what happened then? You become together. You know, I'm not trying to make you to become more like me. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm just trying to be biblical. What do you do to intentionally encourage sermon? I mean, someone. That sermon, someone lately, eh? what what did you do? Intentionally encourage someone lately, and a lot of our popular uh, the rejection for that is that I heard that before, Pastor Josh. I don't want to say things when I don't mean it, when I don't feel like it. Yeah, and it's like uh, I don't want to put my hands up in the, during the sermon when I don't feel like it. Feels like fake, you know. How many of you guys wrestle with that? Yeah. Can I just tell you this then? 
I think number one truth, as I said, if you wait for the emotion to come, it will never come. You don't go by emotion. What do you go by? We go by truth. Let the truth lead your heart. What is the truth? The Bible speaks and says, you got to encourage. You don't go by a day. You don't walk away from church without encouraging someone. If you shut up, if you do nothing, if you stay there, I'll just wait for my feeling to come and I'll do something about it. Then it will never happen. That's what exactly what enemy wants you to be. That's why the church becomes, sometimes we are so cold and so isolated, separated. Not necessarily we don't like each other, but because enemy is going around spreading the, the lies to each other. What do you do? We speak the truth into each other. Jesus loves you. We say it. We encourage each other. You know, go and give them hug someone. They're like, I love you because we love someone, right? We become vocal. We become intentional. We become real in that sense. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Because the day is approaching. The day is coming that you don't need this anymore. You don't want to waste these days resenting and hating, separated, isolated. You don't have to because the day is coming. The peace, the love, and joy and unity will be there. Right now, practice the eternity. Practice the eternity together. And, and I see my friends, you know, this church, and uh, the first thing Daniel G said when he woke up, <laughs> this is what he said yesterday. He says, Pastor Josh, harp is going to be good. And that was so funny how he said, it's going to be better than Hillsong. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be better than Battle Battle. It's going to be better than Houston, right? And his brother, Prashika, goes up, so like, come down. <laughs> I, I love that guy. And if you're watching right there, I didn't know how important a person, the value of the person, until that I see the absence of the person, isn't it? I, 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 I really want to encourage all of you guys. Let's build this church together. Amen? Oh, that's too weak. No, I, what, what did I say? <laughs> you know, please say amen as loud as possible. When Pastor James says, like even last week, he preaches such a powerful sermon, you know, then he goes, amen. You know, I don't like that, right? Amen. amen. Oh, I feel encouraged right there. <laughs> <laughs> be intentional. Be loving. Be caring. Cherish each other, right? And whatever it takes. And, you know, but I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not happening. I'm actually saying that it's happening. That's why it's beautiful. That's why it's just powerful. For those people here for the first time in our church, if you really want to be part of this church, that's why it's not enough just coming on Sunday, hearing our sermon. It's not going to help you. You need to go to a Friday house church, meet someone, talk to someone, connect with someone. I think that is the reason why we're trying to do this. Bottom line is that. It's really not anything, and it's not strategy or, I mean, the, it's not just a, like a church growth movement. It's really about biblical understanding. How do you become a church? We can't do this here. Just, just listening, everybody looking at me. We can only do this through holding on fast the confession and considering each other how to store up and meet together and encourage one another until Jesus comes. Can you say amen? amen. Let's pray.